the Bibles, hold them up. My mind's there. Hold them up because I'll be preaching out of the Word of God this morning so you can check everything I say. It's important to do that. I'm going to talk on faith. I'm going to start a series on faith. Now, why faith, you say? Well, faith, you know, this church is called Faith in His Word Church. So faith is important. The whole Word of God is faith. It's all about faith. It's about grace and everything else too. But faith is the biggest thing that comes out of the Bible. Faith is our part. Grace is God's part. Yes. So we need to know more and more about faith. Amen? Yeah. I don't mind if you say amen and hallelujah and praise the Lord. So what is faith? The, the, um, I'm going back to the Greek again like Peter does. The word is pistos, P-I-S-T-O-S. And it's 245 times in the New Testament, that word. And it's strong as 4102. And it means a firm persuasion, a conviction, belief in the truth, trusting in God. And there's a lot of other meanings too. So that is faith. A firm persuasion, a conviction, belief in the truth, trusting in God. Now, the opposite of faith is what? Unbelief. Doubt. Unbelief. That's not doubt. That's not doubt. That's unbelief. Unbelief is the opposite of faith. Doubt is not the opposite of faith because it has an element of faith in it. Do I believe? Don't I believe? Will I or won't I? So, so doubt is not quite sure if it's faith or, or unbelief. But unbelief is the opposite of faith. In James 1 verse 6 to 7, it says, But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Double-minded means... He's in faith one minute, he's out of faith. He's in faith, he's out of faith. He's not quite sure which way to go. And that's the opposite. Uh, that's doubt. But unbelief is just total unbelief. Not believing what the word of God says. So what, is, what does the scripture say what faith is? Just turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is called the, the great faith chapter. All the, all the hall of faith there it mentions, we're not going to mention them today, but a lot of faith people in the Bible, why they were called people of faith. Now Hebrews 11 verse 1, and this is out of the New King James, I'll wait till you all find it. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The NLT says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So that's faith. If we can see it, it's not faith. That's a fact. The Amplified, I like the Amplified. It says, now faith is the assurance, the, com the confirmation, the title deed. Of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of the reality that faith perceiving as, as real was not revealed to the senses. Now, natural faith and heart faith, we're talking about heart faith here, but what is natural faith? You know, we all have natural faith. When you sat in that chair... You, know, you didn't go and check the chair, did you, to see if the legs were there and see if it will... You just sat in that chair. You had faith that that chair was going to hold you. When you get in a plane, you, know, you, know, you don't go and check the plane out to make sure it's going to fly. You have faith that that plane will take off and fly up in the air and stay up there and come down when it has to. That's natural faith. When you turn on, on, on the switch there on the wall, you have faith that there's going to be light this morning. We weren't quite, quite sure this morning when I turned on the light. 
because there's you know, some blocking hats in the area at the moment. They're working on the wires. But we, we, you know, when we turn on a switch, we have faith that the light's going to come on. We have faith in our government sometimes. We, you know, we have faith that they're going to do the right thing. Yeah, you know, we have faith in our new king, King Charles the Third, that he's going to be, you know, be like his mother and do the right thing. That's natural faith. But we're talking about supernatural faith here today. Supernatural faith, a faith that believes with the heart rather than believing what our physical senses may tell us. Many people want to receive first and then believe. They, you know, they put their belief in what they see. I'll try it out. If it works, I'll believe it. But that's not what the Word of God says. It doesn't work that way. You have to believe first and then you receive. Now, what do we have faith in? The finished work of Christ? God's Word. We have faith in what God's Word says. Even though it doesn't make sense sometimes. But it's God's word, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. We should have faith in that. Another big, big faith chapter is Mark eleven, twenty two and twenty to twenty four. I'll just read it out. Mark eleven twenty two to twenty four. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say unto you, Whosoever says to this mountain, he was standing on the on the Mount of Olives at the time, whoever Whoever says to this man, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he saith will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. When you believe? When you pray. You don't believe you know, when, when the prayers come true, when you see it. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now the, you know, the Young's translation of that verse says, have the faith of God. Uh, the, the Amplifier says, ha, ha, have faith in God constantly. And the God be, whatever that is, God be version says, have God's faith. And that's what we're talking about here, having the faith of God who can move mountains, who created the earth, with speaking. So we're talking about supernatural faith here. How can we tell whether we have the heart faith or we are just mentally agreeing? Mental assent, <coughs> Mental assent says, I know God's word is true. I know God has promised healing, but for some reason I can't get it. I can't understand it. I can't see it. Um, however, heart faith, heart faith says, God's word, word says it, I believe it, it's mine, I have it, it is settled. That's, faith, that's the faith we're talking about. God's word, word says it, we, we, um, we pray, sorry, God's word, word says it, I believe it, it's mine, I have it now, it's settled, that's it. Notice I've said before, Mark 11.24 says, your receiving comes after believing. It says, when you pray, believe. That's when you pray. If you have doubt about asking for something, don't pray. Go to the Word of God and get faith in you before you pray. Because it says that when we pray, believe, not when we receive it. In Romans 10, 17, which is a, a key verse in all this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Joshua 1, verse 8, we read this out last week or the week before. It says, This book of the law, God's word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now the word meditate is um, H-A-G-A-H, Hagar, and it means a verbal utterance, an imagination. If we speak God's, the word of God continually, faith will come. 
That's what I was talking about. If we speak the word of God continually, faith will rise up in us. Now, what faith is not? Faith is not a feeling. But yeah, you know, it's not. A, it's nothing to do with the senses. You don't. You know, you just don't feel like it. Uh, like you have faith any time. When you feel feel good, it's not a reason to exercise faith. It has nothing to do with the senses. It is not something that you see. Faith is not something that you see. You see the results of faith, which we're going to talk about next week. But you see the results of faith with people, what they do, but you can't actually see faith. It's um, not something that you have to feel after, um, after somebody gives a good testimony. You know, people say, oh, that, you know, that really strengthened my faith or built up my faith you know, when you hear a good testimony. And, and you know, that's usually based on emotions anyway, when you hear a good testimony. It's got nothing to do with that. Faith is not trusting in somebody else's faith. You know, great faith teacher, and you believe him because he had great faith. It's not trusting in, in, in somebody else's faith. It must be personal. Yes. It must be your faith. Faith is not trying after you've, after you've tried everything else. You say, well, I've tried this, I've tried that, I'll try faith. Now, that's not faith. <laughs> faith is not presumption. Faith is not a religion. You know, people say, well, what is your faith? They're talking about you know, your religion, your denomination. So faith is not a religion. Um, just because um, you, be, um, you belong to a certain group of Christians doesn't mean you have faith. You know, we're, we're all Christians here, we have faith, but if someone walked in and said, I'm going to have their faith, just because you go to a church that believes in faith doesn't mean that you have it. It is not wishful thinking or positive, th- or positive thinking. It's not something that you know, we exercised once before and it worked. It, faith is now. Yes. Faith is present tense. And it, it, it's not the spiritual gift of faith that we talked about in 1 Corinthians uh, 12 the other week there. How do you get faith? Remember that um, ad on TV, they said, how do you get it? How do you get it? What, what was that about? I forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, used to, this guy used to say, how do you get it? Well, how do you get faith? Well, there's only one way. Romans ten seventeen. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In another version that says, so then faith comes by teaching and our teaching comes by the word of God. So faith comes by teaching and that's what uh, I endeavour to do as a pastor here, teach you people, you, know, you may have heard this before, but faith comes by hearing and teaching the word of God. Yeah, because I want your faith built up. You know, the message says before you trust, you have to listen. But unless God's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. I like that one, I'll say that again. Message Bible. Before you trust or have faith, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there is nothing to listen to. Faith doesn't come by having heard. People say, oh, I've heard that before. Don't ever say that. I've heard that before. Oh, yes, I've, I've, I know all that. You don't know all that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. That's a continual thing. Both Paul and Peter, in their teachings, in the, um, in the Gospels and the New Testament, they repeated themselves time and time again so that the people would receive faith. In um, you know, Philippians 3 verse 1, 1b, And this is Paul speaking. He says, For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for your safety. But but for you it is safe. 
So he, he used to write the same things over and over again. In um, uh, 2 Peter 1.15, Peter writes, Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. So he's reminding the people the same thing all the time. Faith comes by hearing and teaching the word of God and hearing. Never get caught saying, I've heard this before or I know that. Because if it's not working in your life, you haven't heard it properly. Now, faith does not come by prayer. You can't pray for this faith. It doesn't come by laying on of hands. It doesn't come from a word of knowledge or by, or by hearing a great testimony. It doesn't come through trials and tribulations. It doesn't come through dreams or visions. It's not passed down to somebody with, with great faith to the next generation. It's not, it doesn't come by emotions or it doesn't come by common sense. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It, you, you, know, you can't ask God for faith. In Luke 17 verse 5 to 6, you can turn there if you like. Luke 17, 5 to 6. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase my faith. Now what did Jesus say? He didn't say, oh yes, I'll lay hands on you and increase your faith. He didn't do that. He, he said, so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted into the sea and it will obey you. Now God didn't increase their faith, did he? He said, the faith you have, even if it is tiny as a mustard seed, have you seen a mustard seed? They're really tiny, aren't they? If you have a faith as big as a mustard seed, you have enough faith there. You can build on that faith, but you have enough faith to do mighty things. So, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you need healing, Get into the Word of God and, and read scriptures on healing to build up your faith for healing. And then I, I used to go to, um, go to healing school in the States with, you know, with Brother Hagen. And they would, they would have a week-long um, 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 healing school and they would teach the Word of God. Monday, they teach the Word of God Tuesday, they would teach it on Wednesday, they would teach it on Thursday, and on Friday they'd lay hands on people. They didn't lay hands on people uh, in the first four days, unless they were going away, you know, they could only spend the day there. But they taught the people, they built up their faith on healing, and by the time you know, Friday came, their faith was up there, and they received it, and got healed. I, I saw many people healed because of that. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God only. Amen. So that's all I have today. So I, I pray that I've built up your faith enough. If you need healing today for anything, I'm, I'm not going to give a word of knowledge, but if you need healing today, I can lay hands on you. And if your faith is built up today for healing, you'll be healed. If you have faith, a grain of a mustard seed. You've had doubt before about whether God, God heals today or was just in the, old, in, the, in the New Testament at the beginning of the church age. God heals today. Amen. It's his will that he wants you well today. And he will heal you. He says, lay hands on the sick and you shall recover. So does anybody need healing today? Amen.